you're either going to Breakpoint for Singapore next month or you want to go to Singapore for Breakpoint next month. Either way, I'm pretty sure 99% of people will fit in that category. There's just a lot of alpha there. However, this is a new country for some. It's a, a decent flight for others. We'll condense all the alpha of why you should be there and what you should do, where you should stay, what it's going to cost so you can get yourself there and know what to expect. This video you want to watch to the end. So firstly, Breakpoint 2024 is going to be different. It's a new format, so no panels. It's short, you know, debates, fireside chats, those sort of things. We have two main stages. You're not going to be going off into like five different directions like we have in previous breakpoints. The left curve and the right curve. Left curve is a product and business centric. Right curve is for engineers and developers. So I'll be basically at the left curve. For you and by you. So it's community hosted pop-ups, dedicated space for radar hackathon participants, etc. And time and place, Singapore in September, come for token 2049 as well. And if you're keen, you can stay for the Formula One. So to get your ticket, you can just come on down, grab a ticket here, $500 for general admission, devs are less, students much less, and artists are less. Let's start with SIM cards. If you've got data roaming on your phone, completely fine. Otherwise, you may want to grab a SIM card. This company does eSIMs. You're looking at 100 gigs of local data for $12. Singtel, I think, is probably the most or one of the most popular there. I'll probably be getting this, $30 for 100 gigs of data. I'll pick it up in the airport or you can get it from a convenience store. M1 is also decently priced, $12 for 150 gigs. And they are your three best options. Now, if you don't know about Singapore, this is Singapore. If we zoom out, it's a very small island. I don't know how long it takes to get around, but just for context, from the airport to down here, it's like a 30 minute drive. So Singapore is relatively very, very small. And it has a population of over 4 million. So it's quite dense. Now, if we zoom in, I covered this in a previous Breakpoint video, but Marina Bay Sands Singapore, this place you've either seen on like some sort of video or something, or you may recognize this. This, you're probably familiar with this, or this view. This part right here is very, very popular for tourists, popular for everybody. A little bit expensive, but you may want to stay in this area, and where you'll be doing the actual conference itself is over here. So SunTech Singapore Convention and Exhibition Center. How should you get around Singapore? So Grab is the app that's used in a lot of Southeast Asia. So you want to go and download Grab. You use Grab to do basically everything. Prado has a post on it as a, a tourist, basically using crypto to pay for everything. First recommendation is grab a new SIM card, then download Grab. This is cabs, food, payments, etc. You can even fund this with USDC from our Solana network. The exchange rate is around 2%, so not great, but it's okay. Commuting around Singapore, you can use buses or taxis or trains, etc. In order to pay for public transport, you can use contactless bank cards. And apparently to the center, like Chinatown area, from the airport, it takes around 60 minutes with public transport using the train. It costs under three Singaporean dollars. And if you use a taxi, it takes around 30 minutes and it's around 20 to $40. Does Uber work in Singapore? No, it does not. Now there will be road closures happening next month, but I don't know where they are. They're normally on this website. However, at present, it's just not live. Now, what's the weather like in Singapore? It's hot and it's humid and it thunderstorms, from my experience, regularly. Basically every afternoon. So in Fahrenheit, this is what we're looking at. This is current, of course, so it'll be slightly different next month, but it'll be similar. 86, 81, etc. And if you have a look at the humidity up here, the humidity is quite high. If we change this to Celsius, it's like 30 or over 30 degrees. And you can see it doesn't really drop down at nighttime. It's always hot. It's always kind of sticky. Come September, it could be a little bit cooler, but not really. We're still hitting 31 degrees down to around 23 degrees. So around 88 degrees Fahrenheit. So what should you be wearing? It's more of a modest culture, but you probably want to pack things that are light, you know, shorts, shirts, etc. A hat, sunscreen, pretty decent idea as well. Sunglasses especially. You may want to buy a travel umbrella when you're there as well. But in general, think of going somewhere that's quite tropical. It's quite hot. So where should you stay? So if we have a look here, Marina Bay, this is where we are, SunTech. Anywhere in this area is going to be pretty close. However, the suggestions I have been given, and I'll be staying in this area, are, may get the pronunciation wrong, apologies, Taejong Paga or Chinatown. The reason for this is there's a lot of things going on. Good place to get food. You can get cheap food from Hawkers, which is like $5 to $10 Singaporean. This is very affordable. Otherwise, if you go into a restaurant, it's going to be quite a bit more expensive, like $20 to $60 per person. If you want like an espresso-based coffee, it's $6 to $8 Singaporean. Or their local coffee, local copy, is $1 to $3. Beer is expensive, like $10 to $20 a pint. Wine is $15 to $25 a glass. 
and cigarettes are $15 or so per pack. Some Singaporeans have given me this website if you want to treat yourself to somewhere nice. Maybe you've been leveraging since the bottom, you're up decent, and you've got some money to spend. You may be keen on somewhere classy like one of these. So what do you do in Singapore when you're not at the conference? So most of the time we're going to be at the conference. But if you want to enjoy something in the evening and it's not a side event, you've got something like Spectra. So this is a light and water show. This happens every night. It's free. It's 15 minutes. It's displayed over the water at the event plaza and it's highly rated. The Singapore Botanic Gardens may interest you as well if you've got a bit of a green thumb. But for the most part, you'll probably be at side events or getting some drinks or eating out with friends or new friends. How expensive is Singapore? The answer is it's decently expensive. This is a quick look at kind of the cost of living. I don't know how accurate it is, but I know it's an expensive city. It's always been relatively expensive. They earn a decent wage. So a family of four in Singaporean dollars, their estimated monthly costs are about $5,300. And if you're having a look at meals and whatnot, meal for two, mid-range, three course, this isn't too bad. Apparently about $90 Singaporean. Domestic bear, $10. Cappuccino, this is kind of quite expensive over $6, bottle of milk, etc. Using public transport though is affordable. Taxis aren't too bad, but actually buying a car in Singapore, not that you're gonna be doing so, is insanely expensive. A Volkswagen Golf will be $180,000. Are there any other things that I should know? Yes, there are. You cannot chew gum in Singapore. You cannot bring gum in. Do not put it into your suitcase. This has been banned for years due to litter. Just don't bring it, don't chew it, etc. Like all countries, they don't want you to litter, but if you litter in Singapore or if you jaywalk, there are heavy fines. They also have this custom, I may be mispronouncing this, but I'm gonna say it, choping. So this is where you put something like tissue paper on the table while you're reserving a table when you go and actually order your food. So it's done in these hawker kind of environments and you can go with tissue paper, umbrellas, etc. This is a normal thing. So if you see a table with that on it, then someone's reserved that table and then they're gonna come back to it. You have to find a new table. What power plug do they use? So they use 220 to 240 volts. So if in the US you're using 100 to 110, you need to make sure that it's bi-directional kind of, so it can do both, like a laptop charger can, a MacBook charger, an iPhone charger, an Android charger, they can. But a lot of other devices like hair dryers, they cannot. It uses the UK power socket, so you're gonna need a travel adapter. But for most people, you'll be fine. If you're bringing something like a sleep apnea machine or something, you'll have to double check that. That's probably not gonna work. Other general travel tips. We'll quickly go through them. Remember, weather, really, really hot. Visa and entry requirements. Most countries won't require a visa, but double check that. If you're from India or somewhere like that, you will need a visa. We've covered the power plug and they do have safe drinking water. Language, most people speak English. A lot of places you cannot smoke, so be mindful of that. It's a Muslim friendly destination. For emergency services, it's a little bit different. It's 999. And then for ambulance and fire brigade, it's 995. And remember, there's no litter allowed. So even if you're in a public dining place, you have to clean up your station. Finally, tipping is not compulsory, but if it's good service, you're welcome to do so. What else is important? Do not take drugs. Do not use drugs. Do not do anything with drugs in Singapore. Heavy fines and potentially life imprisonment. This is effectively a drug-free country. Side offense. There'll be more information and we'll cover this closer to the time. First, you need to book your ticket, make sure you've got accommodation, etc. But this will be linked below. This is the official event sheet for the builders at Token 2049. And of course, Token 2049 is just before Breakpoint, so there's a decent amount of crossover. Still have a couple more tips. You want to avoid jet lag as best as possible. Singapore from the US is a decent flight, like 15 hours or thereabouts. From Europe, it's a decent flight. It's really only Australia, New Zealand, and Asia that will be able to fly there without any noticeable jet lag. So some general tips for jet lag, stay hydrated, drink water. I personally like a big liter bottle of coconut water when I'm on the plane and when I land as well. Get some fresh air, a little bit of exercise when you actually land, try to sleep on the plane, and ultimately avoid alcohol. When you're on the plane, you don't have a humid environment. The plane has like zero humidity, so you dry out and you dehydrate. And then if you have alcohol, you dry out even more. Some other things that I like is a decent eye mask, a good neck pillow, and also airplugs. So as you know, airplanes are quite loud. This will be a decent flight for a lot of people. And we do want more and more people that haven't been to these kind of events to actually rock up and then not be jet lagged for the entire time. So you're looking at around 78 to 84 decibels inside a decent plane. 
So I use earplugs when I'm on a plane. I use the probably the best ones, which are 38 decibels. These are the same ones that construction guys use. I just get it from Bunnings or Home Depot or whatever your local building supply shop is, just to reduce the noise so you can get to sleep. Then as a sleep mask, I like Manta. You can buy this one, or you can get one that's more affordable in a similar kind of pattern. But basically, these are purely and completely blackout. And then for travel pillows, I've done a little bit of research, but I'm not really familiar. Turtle Travel, it's kind of expensive. I've heard it gets a little bit hot and it's not perfect in terms of your neck. Like you might be a little bit too tall, a little bit too short, but it's pretty popular. But I've seen more good news from this type of design, at least ostrich pillow, and you can get cheaper versions with the same sort of design. Finally, what else can you do? So Token 2049 in Singapore, that's the 18th to the 19th. And then Breakpoint is the 20th and the 21st. But there are some smaller events happening that are related to Solana earlier on the 18th and 19th. And then from the 20th to the 22nd is Singapore F1. Then after Breakpoint, if you're keen and if you're a builder, you may want to go with Island DAO. This is in Thailand. Right after Breakpoint, you have to go and apply. And this is a co-working and building space. So that's everything. All the links are below as per normal. And I hope to see you in Singapore.